mass of the uh, highest of the first, mass of the open, Green Pontiff, that's one martyr. Also, today is the, uh, the birthday of Father Hugo, who lived with for so many years, and uh, so that uh, the Lord should sing this Mass and come on and put attention to Father Hugo. And, uh, and uh, so, in the case that uh, maybe uh, today is uh, birthday, so we can be quite a few. In a few considerations here, On this priesthood, consider here St. Simon Peter, not so much as the Holy Father, which of course he is the Holy Father, he is the Pope, but he's also the symbol, the essence of what the priesthood is. In few considerations, the Lord who speaks to Simon Peter, Si didis me Simon Peter, Pasha, and his meos, Pasha, and meos. Simon Peter, if thou lovest me, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. And so we read this in the intro to the Mass today, that is that, that our Lord Jesus Christ has somehow associated the salvation of mankind with Simon Peter. And we notice that there are two sides to this man, Simon and Peter. And that we notice that, and that the part of the mystery of our Holy Roman Catholic faith, one of the greatest gifts that God gave to our world was the mystery of the New Testament priesthood. And you know, it says that in the Old Testament, Psalm 109, thou art a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. And Melchizedek is a priest, but he is also a king, king of peace, king of Salem. And he came, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, to offer a sacrifice. And why did he offer the sacrifice? What was the occasion of Melchizedek's sacrifice? And it was the occasion of Abraham's chariot. What brought about the priesthood of the New Testament? What brought about the priesthood of the New Testament is that Abraham had a nephew named Lot. And he lived in the wicked town of Sodom, and the wicked town of Sodom were related to the other three kings of Sodom, Gomorrah, and the other two cities. And they were captured by five kings. What we should note is that five kings were wicked conquered the four kings that were wicked. The bad conquered the bad, and the bad fought the bad. And if we look at the history of our world, we see that every man from Adam until the end of the world, he is conceived in sin, he grows up, and he commits sin, and he fights God, but he also fights his fellow man. And he spreads sin to sin. The bad are fighting the bad. Generally, when you see two wicked men fight, what you do is you, you set a little rope around them, you watch them fight, let them kill each other, and whoever lives, execute them. That's the proper thing to do when you have bad men fighting. What we have here our Lord Jesus Christ is watching bad men fighting. The bad are fighting the bad. But what happens? Abraham, he will call forth the priesthood of the New Testament. He is the great man of faith. And Abraham is going to call forth the priest of the New Testament because his, his nephew Lot is amongst those who live in the city of Sodom, and his nephew Lot was captured. And remember that St. Paul will say, the priest is many things. In the passage of St. Paul concerning the priesthood, and then he says, the priest is not his own. The priest is not his own. He has many things, but he is not his own. And somehow the priesthood is, a, is, a, is a Abraham is there looking at the city of Sodom and at the city of Gomorrah, and in that city there is a, his nephew Lot that is dying. And then our Lord Jesus Christ says that the hireling, he runs away from the sheep because his own, the sheep are not. So we get a little bit of a headache because the priest is not his own. And yet another passage tells us that the hireling runs away because the sheep are not his own. When we say the priest is not his own, and yet the shepherd loves the sheep because they are his own, does the priest give up everything? What is the priest supposed to be? 
He's a mysterious Simon and a mysterious Peter. He has a Simon nature and a Peter nature. He has two aspects. Simon, when he met Jesus Christ, he saw that Christ was a miracle worker, and he saw that Christ is God, and he saw Christ make a great catch of fish, and he saw, he heard the beautiful truth of Christ, and he compared the truth of Christ to himself, and he realized that there is no comparison between the truth of Christ, between the miracle and miraculous power of Christ, and the wonderful ways of Christ, and Simon, who is a sinful man. And therefore the very wise Simon began his priestly life by saying to our Lord Jesus Christ, after seeing a great miracle, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. And our Lord Jesus Christ says, No, I will not depart from you. Not only will I not depart from you, but I am going to take you and make you my disciple. And not only my disciple, you are going to be my chief disciple. And I will make you a fisher of men. Today you caught fish because of my miraculous power. But the time will come when you shall catch men. Fifty-three days after our Lord Jesus Christ dies, that Simon is going to stand up in Jerusalem. The Holy Ghost is going to come down on top of him, and he is going to preach a sermon that shall be understood in every language. He shall speak in tongues. And he will point out that the Lord Jesus Christ was just crucified. This is 53 days after the crucifixion. This is extremely fresh. And therefore Simon says, you people here in this crowd, you who have crucified Christ, we are the witnesses of this crucifixion. I was there. Not only was I there, I am not more innocent than you. Because when you crucified Christ 33 days ago, what was I doing? I was denying him three times. I was cursing and swearing that I did not know the man. I am not better than you. But I will tell you that I am a witness. I saw him die. I know his tomb. And he rose from the dead and he appeared to me several times. He appeared to me, and I can tell you most certainly that he who died by our hands is risen. And Simon speaks with a human voice. There are two sides of the voice of Simon. The one side is that it is a human voice, and God has willed that it be a weak human voice from weak human flesh who denied Christ three times, who not only denied Christ three times, but he even misunderstood so many things about his master. And yet Christ wanted that voice. And this is true of all priests. God has willed that the priests of the New Testament, they must be Simons. And if they are wise, they will recognize that they are sinful men. And they will say in their hearts, Lord, depart from me, for I am a sinful man. And yet the Lord calls, You are a sinful man, but I am going to cure your sin, I am going to wipe away your sin, but do not let your sin be forgotten. And Simon never forgot his sin. Every day of his life, from the day that he denied Christ three times, until he died 31 years later, every single morning at the cock crow, he went out and he wept bitterly. Every morning. This is a part of the holy priesthood. It says in the Old Testament even, the, one of the duties of the priest is to weep. You should weep. One does not weep for those things that don't affect himself. When I find out you lost a million dollars, I really hurt, but I'm not that hurt because nobody took my steps. I'm deeply concerned, but not that deep. I don't wait. 
But if it is my million dollars of stone, I stole it, I weep. Therefore, Lord Jesus Christ said, the priest is not his own, but he still has possessions. The priest is not his own, but he, it, why is he not, he, the priest, in other words, is not supposed to be about himself, which is the problem we all have. He must recognize in his own self that he is a sinner. But he will still have possessions. God made us have possessions. It's part of the natural law. The communists say that no man should have any possessions. But the church says no. God made man and he must have possessions. He should have private property. He should have a house. He should have the things he needs to survive. And he has the right over these things. And so one of the mysterious facts about a whole priest of God in the New Testament is that he is not his own. He is simply a slave, a servant of the church, a servant of souls, a servant of others. He is not in control of himself, but he is in control of the things he owns. He does not own himself. And hence the bishop will say, you go here, you go there. You go to this land, you go to that land, you go to this parish, you go to that parish. You leave now, you come back here, you go there. He lives in total obedience. Because he is not his own. He is a slave. But that does not mean he does not have possessions. He will have possessions. Our Lord Jesus Christ said to Simon before he became Peter, he is now Simon and not yet Peter, Simon, I will one day make you a fisher of men. Now you catch fish. So you can make a living. But one day I will make you a fisher of men. The fish you capture, they are your own. One day I will make you a fisher of men. You will be guided, you will be in charge of sheep. They must be your own sheep. And since they are your own sheep, when one of your sheep dies, you weep. Because they are your sheep. You must make the troubles of the world, the troubles of souls, the troubles of all others, they must become your own troubles. And this is impossible unless you forget about the foolish troubles of self. Because we only have room for so many troubles inside of our own hearts. And Simon was well suited to be a priest. Because he recognized, Lord, you are coming to a man that has many troubles in his heart. He has many sins. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Remember always you're a sinful man. And he remembered every day that he was a sinful man until the day that he died. And hence his heart remained clean. Even though he had a brief period where he cursed and swore that he did not know the man. This was in order to teach us that popes can fall and that priests can fall and that they also are subject to sin even after they become priests. It was for our instruction that God allowed the great Simon Peter to fall. But Simon was clean, and Christ said that he was clean because he recognized that he was a sinner. And even though he made mistakes, what always motivated him was that he loved God, he loved Christ, and he loved his sheep. In the final conversation of love, our Lord Jesus Christ tells Simon, Simon, son of John, lovest thou me? And this is the question he asks of every priest, not only of the Holy Father. Simon, son of John, lovest thou me? Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. Then feed my lambs. Make them your lambs and feed them. Make their sorrows your sorrows. Make their desires your desires. Make their heart your heart. And go out after them, for I want a human heart to go after human hearts. It is not my will that the divine heart conquer human hearts. It is my will that a human heart, a weak human heart, a human heart with so many deficiencies, these are the hearts that I wish to use. And there are no greater deficiencies in the hearts of the weak men that God chooses to be priests. And so there is a sign side. And our enemies often see this side very well. How many weaknesses and how much fickleness and how much instability there is in the priest. 
How does he become strong? It is necessary that he learn that he is not, his own troubles are not so important. What is important are the troubles of the sheep. And hence the great Holy Father, Gregory the Great, when he was forced to become the Pope, he called himself the Servus, Servarum Dei, that he is a servant of the servants of Christ. And this is what must be, the Servus Servarum Dei, that it not his will that the priest be the servant of the servants, the Simon and the Peter. The first side beside Simon. Simon, if thou lovest me, feed my lambs, feed my sheep. They must be the lambs of ourselves and the sheep of ourselves, that your troubles are made our own, and there will be many cares and many worries. Now, how is it possible for us to feed the sheep? Not possible without the divine movements, the divine power. The divine power of us to, to, to bring down Christ upon the altar, the divine power to forgive sins, the divine power to baptize, the divine power to minister the holy seven sacraments, the divine power to pray the holy bravery, the divine power to pray the divine office in the name of the holy church, to pray as a representative of the whole church. This is the divine power. The divine power to speak, most importantly, the divine word. With a divine power. And hence, one day, Simon, after we were with Christ for a certain amount of time, our Lord asked him, Whom do you twelve apostles say that I am? And then Simon said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Simon spoke. And when Simon spoke, the Holy Ghost entered into sight of him. And therefore our Lord said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon, son of John, Simon bar -Yonah. Simon, son of John, because flesh and blood hath not revealed this to thee, but my heavenly Father is in heaven. He entered into the weak Simon, and then Simon spoke. He spoke the divine truth, and then Christ changed his name into Peter the Rock. We have a trouble in the world today, the church today, that the priest is weak on both sides. God has chosen the priest to have a human heart with all kinds of fears and anxieties and weaknesses. But this human heart must love the sheep. This human heart must love the church. This human heart must love the Holy Mother. It must love Christ, even though it must regularly go to confession and regularly try to start all over again and regularly re 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 misunderstand and try to re-understand and misunderstand and re-understand. Then one day, God will give the power to that weak heart to speak the truth and to become a rock. Peter means rock. And the weak side of it is turned into a rock. That there is a there inside of the weak flesh of the human of the priest in the New Testament, there must be a rock. And Petra Erak Christus is what St. Paul says. There was a rock that followed them. The rock followed them, he says. Rocks don't usually follow people. The rock followed them, and water came out of the rock and fed the people in the desert. When you're in the desert, there's lots of rocks. But only one rock was struck by Moses, by, the, by Aaron, by the command of Moses. Aaron the priest struck the rock by the command of Moses. And the water came out of the rock and fed the people in the desert. We must understand we are in a great desert. And souls are starving, souls are dying of thirst, and souls need the divine truth. Only when a staff of the cross strikes a rock by the command of Moses and by the hand of Aaron the priest, Moses said, strike the rock, and Aaron struck it. And out came water in the midst of the desert at Petra Erot Christus. And the rock was Christ. Hence, the weak Simon will stand in the Holy Sacrifice of Mass, and he will not say, this is the body of Christ. He will say, hoc est en carpus meum. This is my body. In Latin, in English, we say my body. But in Latin, we say, this is body mine. Hoc est carpus meum. 
And at the last correlation of the word male, when we say mine, at that moment, God the Son, body and blood and soul divinity enters into the host because a Simon said, mine. It's very important, this word. The faith cannot only be objectively true. It cannot only be coldly spoken. It is not just simply a rock that is hard and cold. It is a rock in the desert from whence flows water, a rock in the desert from which comes life. It is also a rock upon which is placed a cross, and on top of that cross is found Christ, and when he dies on that Christ, on that rock, it is filled with blood, and the rock saves. And this rock must be inside of a weak Simon, who will save Hoc est Eden Carpus Meum. This is body, mine, and Christ enters. Christ gives the Peter power to this priest, and it takes faith for the souls to realize God has chosen a weak young man. He's chosen a fool. He's chosen a sinner to say the word that can only come forth from a rock. But it can only come forth without any doubt, without any um, um, uh, shrinking or growing in a movable, uh, unchanging rock of our holy faith. And out comes water from that rock. And there is therefore the second part of the holy priesthood, which is Peter, the rock. And then Christ says, Thou art Peter. Referring, of course, obviously to his papacy. But he refers also in a secondary way to all priests. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. This indicates that St. Augustine, the gates of hell shall attack the rock. The gates of hell shall have great buffeting of the rock. And the rock will be in great peril many times, but the gates of hell shall never prevail. The devil hates the Catholic priesthood of Melchizedek, which began because Abraham loved his nephew. And Abraham fought a war because he loved his own nephew. And we must understand that Abraham's faith was built even around the love of his own nephew, his nephew that did not love him. It was a one way love. And the heart of Abraham is supposed to be in the Holy Priest of the New Testament. And the faith of Abraham was to be his priest to go out and fight the enemies of God. Why? To save lots. To lead his, all his army into war to save one soul. I am the good shepherd, says the Lord Jesus Christ. I lay down my life for my sheep. He leaves behind the 99 that are safe and he goes after the one that was lost and he is ready to die for that one sheep because it is his own and he loves it. And he weeps with that sheep, he worries with that sheep, and he picks up that sheep. And this takes a sign to understand. Angels can't comprehend these things. Only men and God. Because God said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. Only men can understand these feelings. And God wants there to be feelings and passion in our priesthood that comes from our human weakness. And this must be united to the rock of Peter. And when that human weakness somehow is under the rock of Peter, somehow there's moisture in that rock. Somehow water comes out of the rock. Somehow when we say the words, Ego te absolvo, I absolve you from your sins. Somehow when, this, when the weak priest says, Ego te absolvo, you hear a priest say, Ego, I, but you hear Christ speak inside of that priest. You hear priests say, Meu, my, and yet you hear Christ speak, and it is not the priest that enters the host. It is not the priest that absolves the sin. It is Christ that absolves the sin on condition that the priest says, mine. It matters what happens in the heart of the priest. And hence in our holy church, one of the great duties of us Catholics is to pray for the priest. There must be a transformation of the weak priestly heart in order for the world to transform. 
And this cannot be done without the help of the church. Moses held up his arms, and Moses is Christ. And Moses' arms collapsed. Two priests, both of them would be killed by God. The fathers tell us that they were killed by God, but they didn't go to hell. He just wanted to make sure that they shouldn't make that mistake again, so he killed them. They dab and Abbey. They didn't go to hell when they died. They took a strange fire and they went to light the fire because they were too lazy to get the real fire. It was a five minute walk. So they got a strange fire and then God killed them to show the importance of the true fire. And so the next priest wouldn't do that, but they didn't go to hell. But they were weak priests who were a little on the lazy side. And these priests are the ones who knelt beside Moses during the battle. It wasn't Saint Nadab and Saint Abu. It was lazy one and lazy two. And they held up the harbors of, of Moses, and Christ demands that his arms that are stretched upon the cross of the Christ, uh, are stretched upon the cross, they must be held up. And he chose that the priest be there to hold up his arms. For Moses grew tired in the war, and his arms collapsed, and when his arms collapsed, the Jews lost. So Nadab was on one side, Abu was on the other, and they held up the arms for Moses, and the Jews won the battle. The lazy one, and lazy two, held up the arms of Moses. Christ has not chosen the great ones to be his priests. There will always be some great priests, some great saints, there will always be some, and all are called to be saints. But God has chosen the weak to confound the strong, and Nadab and Abihu held up the arms of Moses. And Peter was in them. They were rocks, though they themselves were weak. And so it will be in this holy priesthood. If thou lovest me, Simon, feed my lambs. What is necessary now in the holy priesthood is that the weak priests of the world, struggling all over the world, find a way to feed the lambs. Find a way to feed the sheep. And let the truth that is an immutable rock come forth from our mouths. There's no need to have another truth. And when this truth comes from the mouth, it is Christ that comes forth. At Petra era Christus, says St. Paul, and the rock was Christ, and Peter is Christ. And we pray for the conversion of the chief priest, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, that his human heart, filled with such wickedness, will be turned into sorrow, and that he will weep for his sins, as his ancestor St. Peter once wept. And then he will turn to his master and say, Master, I love thee. And then finally obey the master when he says, Francis, feed my lambs and feed my sheep. And he speaks not only to the Holy Father, but he speaks to all of us, Therefore, pray for the priests that will be able to mix in a proper way by the help of the Holy Mother the mysterious Simon and Peter nature of our priesthood. Because of you all, and the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost. Amen.